All right, if you remember last time, the, the challenge we had was to take the um, Twitter, favorite Twitter searches application and make modifications to it that would allow us to selectively delete um, items from the list as opposed to deleting everything. All right. Uh, last time we looked over what changes we needed to make from the user interface perspective. We added, actually we didn't add because for some reason we were having problems with it blowing up when we tried to add an extra button. So um, we just uh, we're, are going to adapt the button that we currently have to, to do the job. We added a checkbox to it and we added the checkbox to the um, second XML file, not the main XML, but the forget what it's called, new tag view or something like that. Um, so now we're going to look at doing the processing. And in doing the processing, the thing to keep in mind, we're, we're keeping two things in mind. And the two things that we're keeping in mind is that there are two things that we want to keep in sync. We want to keep in sync the um, Shared preferences, which is used to store the searches that we've entered in, and the actual table listing themselves. Those are two separate things. Uh, the table, again, is the user interface that allows us to click on one and do a search, but sort of behind that table, there is, so there's a table with multiple rows. Behind that, there's a shared preferences where we have a tag that points to a query. This kind of structure is called by various names. Sometimes it's called a hash table because instead of like having a, a um, array with a numerical subscript, you have essentially like an array where the subscript is a name instead of a number. So in other words, we say, give me the query that matches the tag Android. So the Android is like the key to the table, uh, or the tag is like the key to the table, and then the query is a value. So anyhow, we want to keep those two things in sync. So whatever we do deletion-wise needs to make sure that when we're done with that process, that both the list and the shared preferences are, are lined up, are in sync. Now, the other thing that we remember uh, from doing this is there is a method on here called refresh tags. I think that's the name of it. Something like that. That goes and takes the shared preferences and recreates this table. That makes our job easier because then we don't have to go and write code to do both of them. We can simply write code to delete out of the shared preferences, clear out the table, and then recreate it. That's a little easier than trying to, you know, write code to, keep, to, to maintain both of them at the same time. So let's take a look at the code that we have for this. Feel free to adjust the lighting any way that will help you. here is we initialize or, or, or we, we create a object that we're going to use to edit the shared preferences. So it, it's fascinating to me how component driven this framework is. You know, 
the old, I, I think it was the old Apple advertisement, there's an app for it. Um, with this framework, you could, you could change that to say, you know, there's an object for it, there's a class for it. So pretty much no matter whatever, whatever it is you want to do, there is a, a component that, that does it. So the good thing is then you don't have to write any like really low level code. You just invoke the proper methods. Now the challenge of that <laughs> is that there's so many uh, components that it takes a while to learn them all. All right? And, and that's really the challenge, and it can be confusing and, and all that. That's where getting very good reading the documentation, some of the documentation that we were looking at last time, will help you out quite a bit. Because that will help you understand the components that are available um, so that you're not, uh, you know, um, trying to reinvent the wheel. At any rate, this preferences editor is going to be an object that we're going to use as sort of our pipeline to our shared preferences so that we can go and make the change. All right, the next thing we're doing is we're looping through all the rows in that query table. If you remember, again, in our application, So we're looping through, and how many times do we want to loop through? We want to loop through once for every row in the table. Now, this is where, keep in mind that we're, we're calling methods that are available for any view. All right? Anything on our screen is a view. And a view can consist of other views. All right? In this case, we have a table, which is a view. And it consists of child views. It consists of views that are inside of the table. That is the table rows. Now, each of those table rows itself consists of a couple different views. It consists of a checkbox. It consists of then two buttons. All right? So all of those things are views. So some of these methods that we're calling are not specific to a table. They are related to a view. All right? So for example, Get child count will tell you how many children are in that view. Now, in the case of this being a table, how many children are in that view is like asking how many table rows there are. But you might be wondering, how can we just didn't say, you know, number of tables or something like that? That's because this method is generalized to views. Not all views are tables. There's a lot of different views. And Views can themselves contain other views. So, therefore, that's why it says get children instead of get table. Or get child count instead of get row count or something like that. So, we're going to run this loop through as many iterations as there are table rows. So, each time through the list, we're going to look at the next table row in turn. All right? And that's what this line does. 
table row equal table row tr equals equals table row and then we're pulling the child in the ith position so again standard loop kind of logic first time through we pull um, table row zero table row one table row two all the way down until we're out of table rows now again Remember, this code is generalized when we say get child. That's generalized for any sort of view, right? So this isn't a method specific to tables. This is a method on views. So get child at that position could return any kind of view. We don't know for sure that it's returning a table row, except we do know that, right? Because we wrote this table, and we know that this table consists only of table rows. Therefore, we can cast it as a table row. All right. We know that the only thing in this is table rows. Therefore, we can cast that. If it happened that there was something else in the table, we'd get a runtime exception that would blow up. Because if, for example, there was some other kind of view, we wouldn't be able to treat it as a table row. But that's not going to happen. All right. So now TR points to the table row. So what we need to do here is we need to pluck out the checkbox for the given table row and this button. The checkbox will tell us if we want to delete it or not. The button will tell us the tag that we want to delete. Because remember, the name of the button corresponds to the tag. <coughs> so. Checkbox CB, okay, we know it's a checkbox, so we can cast to a checkbox. We're going to find the view that's in that table row, the table row that we're examining, that has an ID of checkbox delete. And if you recall, that's exactly what new tag view, that's exactly what we called, that's the ID that we gave to that checkbox. Checkbox delete. Alright. We now do the same thing to the button, and we grab the button out of that table row. So now we have, in those two variables, CB and TB, we have the checkbox and the button that's in the row that we're examining. We then check to see if it, the checkbox is checked. We can do that because we casted that view as a checkbox. We've told it up here that, yeah, we know that this is a checkbox, so let's treat it like a checkbox. All right? If we didn't cast it to a checkbox, we couldn't treat it as a checkbox because not all views have an is checked method. But checkboxes do. So we can ask if it's checked or not. If it is checked, we go and we remove um, we remove that tag from the shared preferences using the preference editor object. Preference editor dot remove, and then we give it the tag. Where do we get the tag from? We get the tag from that button. Additionally, we go in and we remove that row from the table. We actually don't have to do that, right? I guess I lied to you before. I said we weren't going to take care of both of them. We are taking care of both of them because we're getting rid of it from the shared preferences and we're getting rid of it from the table. But this refresh buttons, not refresh tags like I said, but that refresh buttons will go in and it will recreate the table. So we really could comment this line out and it would work the same. When we're all done, we apply our changes to the shared preferences. We clear out the table, and then we recreate all the table rows using that method, which we've already defined and already discussed previously. 
What's the important things about this? Remember, one of the challenges of this class is that we're going to go over some specific examples, but the specific examples aren't meant just to show you how to do the specific thing, but rather to um, teach you some generalized concepts that you can apply in other situations. The takeaway from this part of the example, the, the editing the able to selectively delete items from that list. The takeaway from that in this logic is the fact that views consist of other views. All right? And the terminology that's used is that they are child views. And we can go and we can examine the children views within a given view. And since we're the ones that develop this, we know what those things should be. So therefore, we can cast those. For example, we know here that the child of that table, each child of that table itself is going to be a table row. So we can cast it like that. We can then use our tried and true find view by ID, like we've been using since the very first example, except in this case, we're not using it on the main content view. We're using it just within that table row. So here we're looking in that table row for the thing that has an ID of checkbox delete or new tag button. So really our view, our content view, is a, a really a, a, a big nested set of views, views inside of other views. And we can look through the children of a given view, and we can use our find uh, view by ID to pull out views from the sub-view, all right, and then do something with it. When we pluck out those views, though, it's important to, um, it's important in many cases to cast that as a particular kind of view. For example, if we did not cast this checkbox as a checkbox, we would not be able to ask if it's checked. If we just kept it as a generic view, you know, it, we wouldn't be able to. We actually probably don't need to cast this one because we're not doing anything specific to a table row here. We're just treating a tra table row like any other row, but we cast it up for good measure. Any questions about this? All right. Uh, again, it, it's important to sort of extrapolate and take the stuff that we cover in the examples and sort of see the bigger picture from it and, and not just know how to delete selectively from a table but understand the notion of nested views and being able to scr scroll through the views or, or loop through the views and, and cast sub-views as things and, and treat them that way. Any other questions at this point? All right, the next example that we're going to go over is... going to go over a game. Don't get too excited. It's not a very fun game. It's a game that, as it turns out, is kind of humbling because it's kind of hard. But, I usually do pretty good with it just because I'm a good guesser. And it's a flag quiz game. Now we're going to look at this again, look at the different pieces of this. First thing I want to do is I want to show you how it acts. So we can put this in context. And when we talk about things that make sense, this is not the right, or is this? Between the different devices I have, both like personal devices that are mine and this, it's like keeping track of the cables and what goes into what, I really have to stop and think sometimes. 
All right. So let's go and run this.
different in here. All right. The main, we have a linear layout again that consists of text for the title, title of the, of the game, a text view for the question, this says that this is question 5 of 10 or whatever, an image view that actually shows the flag, a text view that says select the country, guess the country, then this, the buttons, are a table, actually. So that is a table. That's a one-row table. Now, it's a one-row table in this particular case. Keep in mind that we have, um, that there's an option in here to have either three, six, or nine questions. So there's three table rows there. But with our options, with our selection of just three, we only see the first table row. The other two table rows, there's nothing in. So there's three table rows set aside, even though we're only showing um, one of the table rows at a time. We then, on the very bottom of the page, we have a um, something that says, um, you know, whether the answer was right or not. So. Nothing terribly earth-shattering here. Our guess button represents the XML for one of these buttons. This is kind of like the tag XML, the, the new tag view that we had, XML that we had in the last example. Whereas, um, as we add tags to our list, we get more and more of these things. Well, again, depending on how the options are set, we'll either create three of these buttons, we'll create six of them, or we'll create nine of them. Again, nothing too earth-shattering. Colors, we saw that last time. We have the same idea uh, this time, where we give some names to colors. And we could refer to those names throughout our, our layouts. That way, we, if we wanted to change something, we could just change it in here, and it would change it throughout the layout. Likewise with dimensions. Here's a brand new one. We have an animation. All right. And the animation is an XML file. And the XML file specifies what actions we're going to take on the view. In other words, if you remember, with this, if we answer incorrectly, the thing shakes back and forth a couple times. All right? Those motions are described in the, that XML file. All right? Now, there's more than, there's a bunch of different ways that you, there, there's several different ways you can do animation. This is just one of them. This is for simple, straightforward animations like this. All right? Let's look at this XML file and see what it contains. All right? Here's one thing that's interesting. Notice that this XML file never talks about what it is animating. All right? In other words, in this application, the animation that we are doing is we're animating that flag. We're making the flag go back and forth. But we don't see that anywhere in the XML file. In other words, this animation relates to the actions that are taken, not specifically what view is going to be animated. 